Today is October 11th, 2021. I am looking for my daughter. She is my oldest child, my firstborn. She is of legal age. She has been living much like me on the streets. The only difference is I have a vehicle. She does not. Um, she has chosen to be on the streets. Um, in order to stay with me, she'd have to follow my rules as it relates to my vehicle. And I have... Um, I have a daily routine that I try to stick to. It's how I survive. And so she would have to roll into that daily routine. I last saw her on October, early morning, October 4th. I have received, four days ago, uh, a small text message from her. That does not mean that the text message in the communication came through her hands, touched the phone, and was sent through by her directly, okay? Prior to October 4th, I tried to make a missing persons police report on her for her safety and her well-being with the Rochester, New York City Police. I was directed to do go here, go there, go everywhere on that day. And after spending the large portion of my day making this attempt and using my expenses in the form of gas going from here to there, I was finally told while I was sitting in a parking lot at McDonald's on Monroe Avenue by a male police officer over the phone that they do not, it must be, I'm assuming this is their internal policies, they do not do missing persons reports unless the individual is seven years of age and younger. <clears throat> For all other individuals, there must be a starting point, which they classify as a dwelling, also known as a home, a place of residence. Within that residence, if someone under the age, the legal age, is missing from the home, they, the, the individuals within the home can make a missing persons report. If anyone living in the home is beyond legal age, they are free to come and go as they please and therefore they do not do missing persons reports on these individuals. So, in a nutshell, based on my conversation with her, because we don't have, with them, sorry, my conversation with them, because neither her nor I have a residence, a dwelling, a place also known as a home, I can't do a missing persons report on her because the police would not have a starting point to go off of. Even if we did reside together, because of her age, she is of legal age. If she chose to leave my home, if we were sharing a home, I still could not do a missing persons report on her. So that was a fruitless effort on my part. Oddly enough, the following morning, early in the morning, I received contact from my daughter. It was on October 4th. She was looking for $6 so that she could buy an RTS Rochester Transit Service bus pass. I asked her where she was. I went to that location. She approached my car. She was wrapped in a black and blue 
appeared to be wet moving blanket she did not have her backpack that she usually carries with her that is e that she uses not only as a backpack but that's her purse she did not have her cell phone with her which i thought was really odd she typically gets in my vehicle and the first thing she wants to do is plug her phone in because she says she always needs a charge she was wearing a short sleeve black t-shirt with the word witch in the front I told her I didn't have the cash I would have to take her to a 7-eleven to uh, get the cash for her and she rode with me to the 7-eleven on Monroe Avenue I asked her if she would like a cup of coffee and she said she would love one she went to this into the store and fixed her own coffee herself and I also asked her if she would like something to eat while we were there and she said she would love something to eat and she picked up two packages of mini cinnamon donuts I paid for the donuts I paid for the coffee and I got ten dollars cash back for this bus pass that she needed or wanted I then asked her what her plans were for that day because she had family court scheduled in Livingston County and I was making myself available to her if she want if she needed transportation she didn't want to go and I honestly cannot blame her I told her then she needed to make contact with them by phone to let them know why she was not appearing um, in that court and the reason why I can say I don't blame her is because I'm very familiar with what's going on and uh, how my daughter ended up in the situation that she's in really goes back to uh, very very immature never held accountable to any decor individuals of Livingston County New York who get some type of power trip in charge by playing games with other people's lives and they are thus allowed to get away with these things so I'm very familiar with uh, the petition that was filed um, against my daughter and um, we are both aware that the handwriting the person that carved out the petition is not the petitioner the father of the child and um, it is his wife that crafted up and drafted up the petition for him using maybe her own thoughts and her own words uh, and her misspellings by the way um, she really did to, should do a spell check before she pushes those things to the court. And so in this petition, they are... Uh, and why her name is not on the petition, his wife, she crafted it up and she's, you know, basically the one orchestrating the demands on his end. And why she is not listed on that petition is a very good question one that should be quickly addressed I would say uh, she needs to be joined on that petition and uh, anyway she's pushing that my daughter go through uh, mental health counseling and substance abuse and I find that really odd that it's even allowed to be pushed through the court like that since they themselves have mental illnesses and substance abuse history. So, you know, I have strong beliefs that you cannot change what the core of my belief, the foundations of my belief, you can't you can't change those, okay? And I strongly believe that if someone has in this case mental illnesses it's ev evident okay and a history of 
uh, substance abuse that they should not make demands of the court and place those same demands on someone else.